Every second our sun produces more energy than humanity has ever used. The light of this brilliant star has bathed our planet since it was formed 4.5 billion years ago and it will illuminate our days for another 4 billion years. The enormous importance of the sun has been recognized since prehistoric times. Many cultures regarded our G-type main sequence star as a god. Today we know that sunlight is not a deity's magic, but a constant stream of photons, the force carrier of the electromagnetic force. Solar energy technologies include solar heating, solar thermal electricity and solar photovoltaics. In this video I will shed light on the photovoltaic cell. If we zoom in on a light ray we find that it consists of individual particles, proposed by Max Planck and Albert Einstein as the quanta of light those particles have since been named photons. The photons of a light beam have a characteristic energy. For visible light we can see this energy as color. A photon of sufficient energy can free an electron from binding with its individual atom, thereby creating a free electron and a positively charged electron hole. The charge carriers are separated by the built-in field of the semiconductor. Thus holes move towards the anode and electrons towards the cathode and a current is produced. For silicon, the most common material for solar cells, the energy needed to free an electron is 1.107 electron volts about what you get from infrared light. Light with less energy won't bother the electrons at all and the excess energy of more powerful light is lost. Hence the possible efficiency of a silicon based solar cell is limited to about 30%. A combination of different semiconductors would achieve better efficiencies, but these technologies are still in pre-commercial development. Now we need to make a slight detour around the solar system to determine the energy we get from the sun. The sun radiates light equally in all directions. A hollow sphere centered at the middle of the sun would have its entire interior surface illuminated. As the radius increases, the surface area will also increase. Because the constant luminosity is spread over a greater surface area, the flux density or power per unit area decreases. With 4 times pi times r squared for the surface area of a sphere, we get the function for the flux density. This relation is called an inverse square law. The Earth is a long way from the Sun. It takes light about 8 minutes and 19 seconds to cover the 149.6 billion meters between Sun and Earth. The Sun's luminosity is 3.846 times 10 to the power of 26 watts. Put this into the equation and we get a flux density of 1367 watts per square meter. Called the solar constant, this is the amount of energy per second that hits the edge of Earth's atmosphere. As it passes through the atmosphere, the solar radiation is significantly attenuated. Depending on latitude, the flux density at Earth's surface amounts to between 0 and 1000 watts per square meter. The figure varies with the Sun's angle at different times of year according to the distance the sunlight travels through the air and depending on the extent of atmospheric haze and cloud cover. Taking into account the low radiation intensity in early morning and evening and its absence at night gives us a world map of the average solar irradiance. A modern photovoltaic cell can convert up to 30% of the radiant flux displayed here into electricity. But let's be modest and only use a 20% efficient solar cell to power the world. To achieve this we have to produce 472.89 exajoules, neglecting demand peaks and lows. The relatively sparse energy density of solar radiation means that covered land area will be the crucial measure. Built near the equator, where we get a maximum of solar irradiance, the photovoltaic cells would cover about 300,000 square kilometers. Closer to home in Central Europe, North America or Central Asia, an area of 500,000 square kilometers is required. To put this into perspective, the global urban built-up area is 660,000 square kilometers, enough to power the Earth from our roofs. In the previous video of my energy series, I talked about carbon batteries charged millions of years ago by sunlight. Today, we no longer need to rely on burning fossils. Solar power has long been insignificant. 
but since its humble beginnings the photovoltaic cell has been perfected. From powering towns to dreaming about large power stations in space, we can harness the force of light directly and unlock this vast potential to appease our growing hunger for energy.